if you want a machine that makes machines, you're gonna need something this big. Wow, is it, look at the size of this machine, but what exactly is it? Do you know why it's our largest vertical gantry machine? Uh, it is talking about a wingspan of about 32 feet between columns on the y-axis and about infinite amount of X travel. The largest we made is about 30 meters long and the Y travel is 200 inches, five meters. The amount of part you can put in is incredible for a vertical gantry machine. But what about the problems associated with machining parts as big as this? What applications are there? What kind of tolerances can you hit on a machine this size? Well, it comes from the machine itself, you know? So if you look at it, any part that, that's the, that needs machining that is wider, bigger, and heavier can, can accommodate on this one. For example, you talk about machines that are, uh, that need to be machined, parts that need to be machined that are um, like a, a naval engines, for example, or power generation, or even machine tool builders can use this, you know, so to go around the parts, the columns being that big or that tall, there's no limitation on the size that you can do it. Traditionally, you could do with a horizontal machine. Now, you can go around the part and you can do it in vertical solution. And I guess you get a better tolerance when you don't have to change setups on a horizontal machine. You can do it all on the vertical and reach all every on the side. Vertical. All sides, no, no multiple setups, and you don't need a rotary table. And what do you think is the unique construction point from FPT here that makes this machine so um, appealing to customers? But traditionally, when you do a, a traveling cross-rail solution, you have situations where you lock the W axis and you move with the Z axis up and down. What it generally creates is the possibility that you have a better rigidity up on the top and a lesser rigidity at the bottom. On the FPT Dino Wide, what we created is a solution where you can actually contour with the W axis. What it means is I can lock the Z axis in position and I can use my traversing cross beam to go up and down to do my contouring. That changes the game plan quite a bit. Absolutely, with, with machines of this size, you have to start thinking about steel doesn't look like it bends, but at certain lengths, it does start to bend a little bit and you lose that, that repeatability, exactly. that accuracy. And for some customers who, for this might be quite a daunting investment, a big investment, they have to think a lot about, how do they know it's got the flexibility to handle different kinds of work, let's say if contracts change and they get different kinds of customers coming in? Well, this machine is built for a job manufacturer, contract machining, because they can't choose exactly like the point you made. They cannot choose what kind of parts that come in. It may be aluminum, it may be inconel, it may be titanium tomorrow. So how do you, the flexibility doesn't come with the size of the machine or the dimension of it. It comes from the type of materials that you use. So you can go from a high torque application that requires like 11,000 newton meters of torque or 10,000 foot pounds of torque to something that can go up to 24,000 RPM with a small tools that are two millimeters diameter. So that's the flexibility we are talking about, not just purely from size and the dimension. And those spindles can all be tool changed automatically for overnight running, longer cycle times. Absolutely. And with, the, with, the, with changing the heads, you can get up to dead nuts pre precision, even with changing the heads back, back and forth. That's where the flexibility lies. Brilliant. I think Jan Marco, the operator here, is machining an FPT column as we speak. We best get out of here before he turns the machine on.